Hi guys, my name is Pearlie. I'm Dennis. And welcome back to another chapter of the fitness playbook where we don't always, always play it by the book. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. And if you, I hope you like our previous chapter with Luke. And today we have our very special guest with us. Dennis, could you please introduce? Yes, uh, she has been practicing the vegan lifestyle for many years. She is also an integrative nutrition health coach and she's a certified reformer Pilates instructor. Quite the resume there. Yep. Can we please give a warm welcome to Joyce! Joyce! Thank you for joining us, Joyce. Thank, Thank you, you for, for doing this. Me. Yes. So the reason why we wanted to do this podcast with you because we think that you have a very interesting lifestyle and I think a lot of um, people would benefit from, from it. Okay. So can you just roughly give us a background about yourself, where yeah. you're from? Where I'm from? Just That's like, like a complicated <laughs> story. That's not with a complicated one. So um, my dad is Taiwanese, mm. my mom is Malaysian, um, but I was born and I grew up in South Africa. And then I moved to Singapore after that, and then I moved to Malaysia. And then I went to England for university, and now I'm back in Malaysia. So it, that's my roughly... It my almost story. sounds as complicated as mine. Almost. <laughs> what? Why, why is it so complicated? Close. Because, like, when someone asks you where you're from, yeah. it's like, where do you start? Which one do you choose? Yeah. My ethnicity, my, like, where I grew <laughs> where up, from, yeah. yeah, where my mom's from. Okay, true. anyway, so we really want to know how long have you been... Uh, a we- vegan and what made you transition? So I've been vegetarian. Uh, I turned vegetarian when I was 13. So that was 11 years ago. Wow. Um, and wow. then I've been vegan for the last five years. So when I turned vegetarian, um, it was really just for like personal ethical reasons. I just didn't want to like support animal cruelty and the animal industry and all of that. Um, but obviously I was quite young. I was 13. So my parents were a bit like, mm, I don't know if you should. And then I was going away for a school camp and I had heard the all the people in the year above got like food poisoning the year before from all the meat they had had at the camp. So That's I was you. like, I just used that <laughs> as my excuse. I was like, oh, you know, I'll just try it out for a week. So I ended up trying it out for a week. And then after that, I just didn't eat meat anymore. So that's like how that's it started. It? Yeah, wow. that was it. So I didn't, I don't easy. even remember yeah. like what my last meal was or anything. And that's the thing. Like I never struggled with it so much, like cravings mm-hmm. wise or anything, which is why I think I stuck with it. And mm-hmm. then the same with going vegan. I only went vegan six years after I turned vegetarian. But then like one day I just decided, you know, I'm not having dairy so much anymore anyway. It kind of comes from the same philosophy. Why don't I just try it? Mm. So I tried it and I didn't find it difficult. So I just stuck with it. But you said it was 11 years ago. You yeah. were 13. I'm sure like Instagram's not really there yeah. yet. YouTube is not there. Like what made you think like when I was 13, like I don't think about stuff like that. Yeah. So what made you and who helped you and like how did you do it because information i'm sure is not that yeah, great that it was time. a lot harder i mean for me that's the thing even though i'm veg- uh, like vegan mm-hmm. i don't actually watch a lot of vegan documentaries there's a lot of them i haven't watched because for me it's just like obviously if you're gonna eat meat it comes mm-hmm. from an animal the animal needs to be killed so that was just my it's kind of like common sense. Exactly. You kind of knew that yeah, already. Yeah, so I didn't yeah. really need to like... Google. Yeah, exactly. Can I eat duck? Yeah, exactly. Can I eat chicken? <laughs> exactly. Like my first stint of vegetarianism or whatever was when I moved to Singapore and we stayed in this hotel that gave us like a little duck toy. And I was like, it's so cute. I don't eat ducks anymore. So I just stopped eating ducks. Oh, wow. So, I mean, I think it's just always been in the back of my mind. Um, but then, yeah, no. Back then, 11 years ago, it was a lot harder, especially eating out. Because, like, not a lot of places would have vegetarian options. So most of the time, if I was eating out, I would eat, like, a plain salad and then a plate of chips. So, like, really not that balanced. And even back then, I didn't really know. I would just try and eat loads of, like, loads of eggs, loads of cheese, mushrooms, even though it's not really, like, a protein. I just thought that was what I could replace meat with. So it's definitely been, like, a learning process for me. I had to learn it as I was doing it. But there's so much more information now, so it's yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah. So you were saying that there wasn't any main struggle when you were transitioning. But if you have to name me one, what yeah. would you say was the struggle? I would say, I mean, turning vegan, that wasn't hard at all. Mm. But I think when I went vegetarian, it was just knowing what to eat because I was so young as well and yeah. my parents didn't know either because mm. obviously like they've not had this type of experience before 
So I was having loads of cheese, loads of dairy, not knowing that like that doesn't sit well with me. So I would get like really bloated, mm -hmm. get like breakouts and all that, but I just didn't know and I would just keep eating it because I'm not having meat, so I should have my calcium from dairy or something, right? Right. Um, so it was just understanding that sort of like what I should eat that was difficult for me. And then also social situations, I still find quite difficult because even though for myself, if I'm cooking at home, if I'm with my family, I'm usually okay. It's just if I'm out with friends, I don't want to make them feel awkward about what I can eat or like if there's no options or if they've prepared something and I can't eat it, I really hate putting mm -hmm. that on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those were my main struggles really. Mm -hmm. While we're on this note, because yeah. uh, I know some people there are actually not very aware of what oh, yeah. a vegetarian and vegan is. Can Got you it. just explain what the difference is? Because some people might think they're the same thing. Yeah. Um, so as a vegetarian, I didn't eat any meat. So I didn't eat chicken. Sorry, guys. Need to move this. It's all right. Okay. So I didn't have like chicken, red meat, all of that. Um, I also didn't eat fish and seafood. But dairy and eggs, I still had. Um, and then as a vegan, that means I eat uh, no meat, but also no animal byproducts. So eggs, dairy, like your butter, yogurt, cream, all of that. And then I also don't have honey because that comes from like an animal mm. source. But then for the vegan lifestyle, that also extends outside of just food. That ex like you don't wear leather, you don't wear suede. Wow. Yeah, mm. little things like that because it all comes from the same philosophy. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, when you bring that up, I think a lot of people have actually they only focus on the eating yeah, part. I actually, exactly. I, you know, I actually didn't think about yeah. that. It actually applies to, you know, the vegan lifestyle applies outside of that. Yeah. So that's actually very interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it is like a belief system at the end mm. of the day, what you believe in. If you don't believe in supporting like animal cruelty, then it does extend out. But there are some people who just practice like a plant-based lifestyle, which mm. really focuses on like the health side of things. So that is just not eating meat and not eating um, like eggs or whatever. But outside of that, they it doesn't affect them because mm. they're not doing it from an ethical point of view that's true yeah well speaking of health i mean you're a very active person right yeah um and now that you're also a you know reformer pilates instructor how has you know being this vegan lifestyle how does you know how do you feel your energy level throughout the day when you're working when you're training like does it does it affect you at all or there's no difference it's hard for me to compare. I mean, I was quite active in school. I played a lot of sports, but because I turned vegetarian so young, um, I don't have much right. to compare mm. to. You're so used to. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, like, I do notice like my energy levels drop if I'm not eating enough or not eating like a well-balanced meal. So um, what I try to do is just mindfully make sure when I'm eating my meals that it's not just like a plain salad with some leaves or anything like that. I've got like um, complex carbs, I've got my proteins, I've got my healthy fats, all of that just to help fill me through the day. Mm. So it's just really understanding. I think when people ask me what they can eat, I think because we're so used to having meat as like the main part of our meal. So once you take that out, you're just left with like your vegetables and side dishes, but you just have to learn what you can put in instead to help keep you like satisfied, help give that meal a little bit more substance. Mm -hmm. So just understanding what your plant-based proteins are, understanding where you're gonna get your healthy fats from, where you're gonna get like other like micronutrients as well. I th I think why so many people like stop is because it acquire way more effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And understanding and like grocery time and experimenting. Yesterday yeah. I was and watching. Cooking, right? Mm, yesterday yeah. I was watching this video like this guy that stays in Mexico. He tried to go thirty days vegan in Mexico mm -hmm. and it's it, he find it hard to pick um, vegetables and fruits and what do you do with them yeah. and like what what do they do right so I guess that's why people kind of stop halfway I think, I think it's just sort of under like learning to educate yourself about yeah. all of these things because for me obviously I started for ethical reasons mm. so it was some because it was something I really believed in it was something I guess I forced myself to learn and mm. to pick up because it didn't happen overnight it happened over like a few years and mm. now I've got like a better understanding mm -hmm. but I think if you're really dedicated like obviously you guys know even just like eating healthy when you're going to the gym and all that mm -hmm. it's quite hard in the beginning if you don't know if you're so used to just like getting food from like a nearby restaurant or just relying on eating out 
it takes a lot of time to understand how to meal prep like how to order healthy when you're out but if you really like dedicate your time to it and like try and understand it more slowly you will mm. pick it up it just requires a bit of time. about dining out yeah. right so i'm sure you have you have friends or family and boyfriend that it's not vegan so when you go to a um, like a non-vegan restaurant but yeah. you have to eat so what do you have to be cautious of because yeah. you know sometimes their menu is so like eh, they don't yeah. really say much exactly. so how do you no. like make sure that you don't all the stuff that you're not supposed yeah. to get. I mean, so obviously I became vegan when I was in England. Mm-hmm. So there, like, the awareness, not even just for, like, vegans, but, like, for allergies and different dietary requirements, it's so, they take it so seriously because they know you have to, like, respect that. You can't just feed someone nuts. If they've got nut allergy, they might yeah. die. Yeah. Whereas here, I think they, there's not that understanding yet in the service industry. So... For me, I actually, most, my whole family's not vegan. Most of my friends aren't vegan. So when I go out to eat, I prefer eating at non-vegan restaurants anyway. So everyone has something to eat. So you just have to understand, like, what to ask. Like, you have to use your common sense as well. If you're in a Thai restaurant, the vegetables are most likely going to have fish sauce or, like, maybe some shrimp paste and, like, a chili sauce. So you have to break it down and ask specifically, does this have fish sauce in it? does this have this ingredient in it? And then they find that a lot easier to answer than mm. is this vegan? Because they don't know what <laughs> yeah, vegan is. Exactly. What if they don't know and they just want to ignore yeah. you because yeah. you're a lot. asking so much and yeah. then you just eat. You know, especially I mean, in, a, in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, they wouldn't give a shit. They'd be like, <laughs> it, it oh my gosh, I'm a fan, just uh, eat yeah. that, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I find, it depends. Like, some places... I find when you say you're strict vegetarian, they respect that more, especially Chinese restaurants yes. or Indian restaurants because yes. obviously that's in the religion. Yep. So then yeah. they start to respect that and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Then they'll go check on the ingredients. Mm. Um, you just have to tell them onion and garlic is okay. But it's just understanding locally what people will understand. And then also even here, like a lot of like pizza dough and stuff usually doesn't have dairy in it, but I know a lot of the restaurants here do have it inside. So if you just ask them, can you please go check with the chef? Sometimes they'll do it and they're really nice about it. Sometimes they won't. It just depends on your luck. You so, just get used to it. So what do you do if you have something that is not vegan? I'm if sure. I have something, yeah. Have you? Oh, all the time. Like oh. even, oh. like I go to restaurants, I'll call in advance. Sometimes I call in advance as well. If I know it's like a birthday or like mm. a special meal, I'll call in advance because then at least like they have time to prepare if they're going to prepare something else. So, like, my birthday a couple of years ago, I called a restaurant, I won't say where, so I called a <laughs> restaurant, and I asked them if they could prepare me, like, a vegan meal, I explained everything, and they're like, yeah, of course, no worries, come in. So I went, and then they were super confused when I arrived, they're like, what? Like, so I explained it all over again, and then they're like, okay, sure, why don't you have this pasta dish? So I was like, okay, sure, like, and then I saw it coming, and I just saw, like, a mountain of parmesan on top like oh, cheese no. and then it came and i was like oh sorry is this cheese and he was like yeah it's parmesan <laughs> <laughs> most of the time i will just be like sorry i ordered it without cheese could you please like like i don't know m- make it again or something like that most of the time they just scoop off the top mm. layer and mm. then give it to you yes. which is kind of, it's, mm. it's a little bit disappointing but i think that's why i sort of developed an understanding of where to go eat and where to avoid like, See, it's so much effort like yeah. if you ask 80 percent of people they just yeah. like i can't i yeah. can't it's just too much work you know the thing is it is a lot better now it sounds complicated but it is so much better now than it was like 11 years ago like mm, when true. i first became vegetarian 11 year go- years ago not even vegan i think if i was vegan i probably wouldn't be able to eat out but now at least there are some like really good vegan restaurants there are loads of restaurants that are trying to put vegan options on the menu so at least like you can order it and you know that it's mm-hmm. vegan mm-hmm. um but yeah it's just about knowing where to go mm-hmm. what to order um and then that sort of makes it easier so let's sum it up if someone is new to the vegan lifestyle what is the three tips that you would give him or her when they dine out dining out mm-hmm. um the first one is to yeah so the things that i was saying basically instead of saying is this vegan or asking the like server if they can make it vegan say strict vegetarian it makes it so much easier for them to understand because Mm -hmm. they already immediately understand no dairy no eggs then you Mm -hmm. don't have to go through that um but then also just run through the ingredients like 
it like use your common sense as well if it's a pasta dish there's more, more probably gonna be cheese in it or some dairy or butter or something like that so just say is there any butter is there any um, cheese in it and then they'll be, even if they said yes it's vegan or whatever then they'll be like oh yes there's cheese let me ask them to take trust it out you guys. yeah <laughs> no i don't think i can do with it like i don't trust i won't eat out at all yeah you just have to learn to be disappointed mm-hmm. but i mean it gets easier um and then what else and then I would also say, this is just something I do. I know a lot of pe- other people don't really mind, but like um, when I eat out, a lot of the meals, they're not very well balanced because they don't really have an understanding of like, mm. they'll just put in vegetables, but there's no like plant-based protein or something like that. So what I do instead is like, if I know I'm going to go out to eat that night, I'll make sure that for lunch, I have more protein mm. to make up for a meal that won't have so much protein mm. later right. in the evening. Right. So, so when yourself. you say there's not a lot of restaurants that have a very well balanced. Yeah. So if you could recommend some that you think is really good. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, there's this really good um, vegan restaurant. Uh, it's in Hatamas. They do. They started out just doing like burritos um, and all that like Tex-Mex style mm. food. Um, but now they also do like local food. Like, you know, your nasi lemak, your mm. nasi karabu. They do... Um, um, like this mushroom rindang Mm -hmm. and it's really good so even like my non-vegan friends boyfriend who I've brought there they really do like it Mm -hmm. so that one I highly recommend if you want to try out some like good vegan food oh sorry it's called Sala oh they're on Grab yeah they're actually really good so Mm -hmm. and then because they've got like um, because you can customize a lot of what you make, so you can ask them for like extra tempeh, you can ask them for extra chickpeas, mm. tofu, etc. Yeah. Mm. So it's very easy to like customize your meals right. there, and they're right. super nice. Um, where else? I really like Lizette. It's not. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. 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 It's not a vegan restaurant, um, but I like it because obviously it's, there's options for everyone. Every Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday or Friday? I think it's Thursday. I don't know. Anyway. Tuesday and another day, they have a vegetarian buffet, which isn't vegan, but most of the stuff on the platter is vegan. So there's loads of options to choose from. Mm, yeah, I've been there once yeah. a few times. Yeah, actually. so I like, those are places that I really like. And then just like, you know, like salad bars, like a grain, mm. Rocket Kitchen, mm-hmm. even like Pokeball places like Finn and Publica. Yeah. They're really good as well because you've got, I really like Finn because they've got like, they've got tofu, they've got edamame, you've got quinoa, but then they've also got like, things like seaweed which is really good for vegans as well because it's really high in iodine and calcium so Mm -hmm. yeah those are my interesting picks i i have some you know i have some clients that are actually vegan yeah right but one of the biggest struggles for them is getting enough protein got it you know what would you say what would you recommend to those that are struggling like that are practicing vegan lifestyle but i think there's a lot of misconception that you can just eat like it, as long as it doesn't contain yeah just take out the meat yeah and then have the but meat. it's a lot of carbs right yeah, yeah. so how do you balance that um i think it's just before you begin sort of understanding what your plant-based proteins even are in the first place so once you have your whole list then you break it down into which are the incomplete proteins and which are the complete proteins and how much each of them have like you don't have to memorize it but once you start familiarizing it yourself with it it makes it a lot easier because I don't measure out every meal I have. I just make sure I have at least like two portions of each mm. in each meal. So like for example, like um, for lunch, I might have like tempeh and like chickpeas or something. That's two um, sources of uh, proteins I can get. Then there's also like edamame beans, natto, um, uh, lentils, like just rotating it around and nuts and seeds as well. Rotating it around to make sure I get a little bit of each, but making sure there's enough in each meal, mm. I think is really good. But it's so high in volume mm. and fiber. Do you get bloating issues a lot? I find like when I eat like the whole foods, mm. not so much. I find what bloats me out is when I have like you know those like meat alternatives yeah for me like i understand why people would go for meat alternatives yeah. and i've tried them myself but it was they're more, pretty good yeah they, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're quite good what's inside it's, i don't know it yeah it's very like from plant protein right but, but they're yeah. probably not the best I, I mean i mean no they're actually not that bad i just feel like for me because i haven't had meat in so long anyway 
I haven't had meat in so long anyways, I'm fine with just like my veggies, my tempeh, my tofu and stuff like that. I think it's more for people who are transitioning or want to try yeah. the vegan lifestyle mm-hmm. and then kind of like want like a burger or something, then you can just buy the Beyond Burger. Mm-hmm. But for me, those blow me out sometimes. So I try to avoid that. Yeah, because I watch, I, I watch quite a few videos of people mm-hmm. transitioning or people just wanting to try out. Yeah. And they didn't like it a lot because it bloats them up like and yeah. it, they break out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have a lot of gas and indigestion. Yeah. So I was like, I was thinking like, okay, but there's a lot more fiber. You shouldn't feel that way. Yeah. But maybe too excessive and too drastically once you start transitioning is mm. probably not the best idea to just like take everything in, right? I think you just have to try it out and mm-hmm. see which foods blow you out and all that. That's because true. I find like things like tempeh because they're fermented and so tempeh and natto for those who don't know is like a fermented soybean Mm. so when they're fermented they're a lot easier for you to digest because it's already sort of broken down there's loads of really good amino acids in there so having those sources of protein work really well for me then maybe like i know some people find like legumes like lentils chickpeas all that they don't and beans don't work so well for them Mm -hmm. so maybe just shifting away from that first but slowly introducing it into your diet mm. yeah interesting hmm. well i mean you know speaking on that um you know a lot of people have been trying out the vegan lifestyle i mean i'm not sure have you seen the the you know documentary Game on changes. netflix Game changes. <laughs> yes. what is your take on that uh, yeah because uh you know actually we'll let you speak first because yeah. we have a lot of things i'm sure to it's very controversial yes, it yeah. yeah um well Again, for me, I came in from the ethical point of view. So the Game Changers documentary kind of comes in from like a health perspective, which I think um, is more convincing to a lot of people because not everyone, not like like going against animal cruelty isn't something that everyone believes in. So for me, I don't think, I've never been the type of person that has been like, you should go vegan, you should go vegan, like going around telling people they should go vegan. I think what it was good at doing was sort of opening the conversation that there's no, like, you you can explore the idea of, like, veganism or plant-based diet and still get enough, like, nutrients from your food. Because, like, I think it's really nice when you go to countries like Bali and stuff like that, you go to a vegan restaurant, you see these, like, big, burly surfer dudes or guys, and they're eating, like, like a vegan bowl or something yeah. like that. But they're not necessarily vegan, but they're open to the idea yeah, of having like a vegan meal fine. once in a while. So I think it's just opening up people's minds that you can still have those types of meals once in a while and just eat more plants and have that incorporated more into your diet. That's where I came from. That's why I thought it was like a good, mm. yeah. I saw a lot more people being, a lot more people who are very opposed to the idea to start with after they walked, watched the documentary, they're like, you know, I could try it out. And like, they tried it out. Did they necessarily stay vegan for like a long period of time? No, but then at least they tried it out and you're like, hey, you know, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Yeah. So like later on in the future, they might have like, when they're going out for a meal, they might have like a vegan meal instead of a, like mm. a meat-based meal. Mm. So I think that's why it was nice. Mm. Before we end this video i just want to know i know that you do blogs you do recipes any way that you can lead them to your blog because i really like how informative it is and yeah. i was thinking like when you say um make sure you have a protein uh, make sure you know a protein if you have pdf files yeah. of like protein different type of carbs protein blah 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 that you know maybe some people that's new to this could download it yeah. and have it I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that because so many people have been asking, especially since Game Changers. I think since Game Changers (laughs) has come out, it's like started the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, so many people have been asking me. So, I've actually been thinking of making like an ebook where I can have all the information, like the breakdown of all the foods, the resources, Mm -hmm. your shopping list, recipes. Yeah, and and recipes in the end, like really easy ones. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You should do it. I don't don't think there is a lot of people that is like you here. I mean, they, they might practice this vegan but they don't they're not yeah. out there mm-hmm. and if you already have a platform and yeah. like a blog and stuff going you should really yeah you know, do that's it. the thing and i want to make it like accessible to people who live here mm. so you've got local ingredients mm-hmm. like that you can buy not really expensive like imported ingredients like a beyond burger that mm-hmm. not everyone can afford to have every day so i mean if i do do what's that what's a beyond burger i have I also don't know. what is that it's
it's made from plant proteins and then plant ingredients like beetroot and all that but basically it's done in a way that it has the texture of meat and it bleeds like meat so it looks oh, like so meat. is it from the beef <laughs> yeah the yeah exactly and like it's so my best friend's boyfriend is the biggest meat eater in the world he will never touch vegan food mm-hmm. but we like conspired to like we did we threw this whole barbecue just for the sole purpose of feeding him the burger because you can't even tell it's not oh so you I, guys you yeah. guys so like I brought it up to him I let him smell it he's like ooh meaty <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's completely and he vegan. liked it he didn't know okay well we overcooked it so he was oh, a bit like I don't know it. I don't really like it but he didn't the whole time he had no idea until oh my god so wow. he had no idea yeah. Not, wow yeah. so i mean that's a beyond burger so basically okay, you can buy it at <laughs> supermarkets now oh really but like what i was saying was my re- like the recipes i try and do try to i try to use more local ingredients things that are a little bit more affordable because when you have more sustainable solutions and people are more likely to like continue that yeah. sort yes. of like practice yeah. if you only give them really expensive ingredients even just not even like vegan food like with healthy eating in general yeah. if you have to spend that much money yeah. people are not gonna do it yeah so yeah so i post recipes on my blog sayang.com so that's s-s-a-y-a-n-g.com um, and then I've also got an Instagram where I post more regularly. So that's at sayang.life. I will make sure I link those two links in the description below so you guys can check her out. I just realized I didn't look at the camera the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's it for Denny's. Anything else? Uh, I think before we end the yeah. podcast, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to have Joyce actually show us three quick and easy recipes yes. for those who are transitioning to be a vegan or those that already are. Or or not. Or not, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you can always just try it out. Okay, so we will go get it done right now. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.